it is time to now get into the Shinra Tower. We, we initiated the battle at this position so that it takes very little movement to get to the elevator here. And then you run straight left and hit circle to, hit, to get to the button here. Two down, go straight to floor 60. And now as you're going to floor 60, uh, you have to talk to Barrett and Tifa before the, um, before the cutscene ends. So what I do is I just start holding right and mashing circle. And right when Barrett gets talked to, I start holding down and mashing circle. And that just talks to both of them real quick. So right for one, down for the other. Uh, very easy. All right, all right. So now for this part, uh, this is the part where we have to Metal Gear Solid past the guards. And this is one of those classic speedrun moments where the fast way to do it is easier than doing it slowly and carefully because it's consistent. If you do it slowly and carefully, it's going to be different every time, and you're like, Ugh, you know, relying on, relying on like reactions, right, instead of timing. And so, uh, so instead, we're going to do it the fast way because it's consistent and easy. So how we do it is just buffer up and right and run uh, coming out of the door here, and that'll leave the room. Right when you hit the screen transition, switch to up left. Yeah? So you switch to up left, and then uh, right when you get in this door, switch to up right. So whip around the door going from up left to up right. Boom, boom. You'll initiate a cutscene. This cutscene is going to have two text boxes, uh, and you should already be buffering... Uh, up, right, and run to get out this door. And you want to run in front of the middle statue. And you can be all the way down here, just anywhere in this line, uh, and you'll be fine. So, um, two text boxes, one, two. Middle statue. There you go. So now, uh, once the guards move, run all the way to the middle. Okay? Now Barrett comes out. Mash until he starts to run once so that he gets to the middle statue. So he's going to have one text box, and then your mashing, will, your mashing will cause him to then run to the next statue and then stop. Because he's going to stop at the middle statue, and then when they start moving, mash him all the way to the middle. Tifa is the very... Uh, yeah, when you, when you load into the screen, they always load in at the same spot. So as long as you do everything the same every time, it's going to be the same every time. So now Tifa is the tricky one. Look, what you actually do is look at the guards on the top right. Tifa's going to run in here and she's going to stop. These guys run to the left and they're going to stop, but don't do anything yet. Don't even look at these guards. It doesn't matter. What you want to do is look at the guards on the top right. And the next time that they stop moving, start mashing circle. Just after they stop moving. So they're going to move, right? And then they're about to hit their spot where they're... Oh, and by moving, I mean running. They're going to turn, and you want to you wanna start mashing circle during their turn, and you're going to mash Tifa all the way to the middle. So right when they stop, boom, right there. At this point, uh, when, as they, you know, just as they start turning in, just start mashing circle, Tifa will get all the way through. Um, every time. And then, now you're Cloud again, so you gotta be ready immediately, right away, with Cloud. Uh, run to the first statue, and when they start moving, run him all the way through. Circle Barret to the, to the first statue. When they start moving, run him all the way through. And then with Tifa, you can just chill. Tifa is pretty easy now. Wait for the guards to switch. Wait for them to run over, run her to the front. And now, there's two ways to do this part. I'll use a save state here. You can uh, have her run through right here. And then right there. But either way, either way, you are waiting for the guards to run into this position. And then, and then Tifa's just through right now. Uh, and so, you're done. Or, what you can do is wait for them to do this switch. And then while they run into the same position, they're running into the same position here, you can just mash Tifa all the way through at that point. You lose like a half second by doing that. Essentially, if you do it that way, you lose the amount of time that it takes for Tifa to run across one of them. That's how I do it, though. I just think it's, I think it's way safer to do it that way. So now everything at speed, real time, here we go. Uh, with a little bit of fast forward here. Oh, whoops, we're 
I, I had fast forward on. Okay. So it's up left, into up right, two text boxes, middle statue. And then when they start moving, all the way to the middle. Mash Barrett until he runs to the middle statue. And then run him to the middle. Tifa, look at the guards on the top right. They move, they stop. When they stop again, start mashing. Just like, just like that, get her all the way through. First statue with Cloud, all the way through. First statue with Barrett, all the way through. Tifa, it's time to chill. When they run to the right, bring her here. And then it's just fine to wait for him to switch. And then when they do this move, bring her all the way through. And there you go. That is the guard section. Uh, that's the fast way to do the guards. Again, it's one of those many things where you don't have to do it exactly that way. I've seen people do it other ways. That's how I do it. And uh, it's pretty quick. All right. Time for the next, uh, time for the next uh, part, of the, part of the tutorial. So next, we run up here. Um, what I do at this point is, is buffer down into this screen. So just be buffering down here. And then switch to down, you know, zigzag out. Uh, and then talk to this guy right here. So if you ran directly down, this guy is always going to be right here. Uh, the more time you take, though, he's walking around. And then choose the second option here. So the very first text box that he brings up, second option. Where's Aerith is a waste of time. So, second option, and then just be running away from him while you mash, so that right away, right when you get released from paralysis, uh, you're running away from him. Um, that way you also don't have to worry about over mashing and starting another conversation with him, because you're running away, so Cloud's going to turn away. Uh, and then just run up the stairs. And now this part, there's, there's two ways to do this part. Uh, so we're going to make a save state right here. Um, it is time for the mayor's password. So, uh, just like on the last screen, when you buffered down to, to quickly be moving right away, on this screen you can buffer up uh, to, get a, to get around the stairs here. So, there's this whole puzzle in this area, and the only information that you need, the dead giveaway for this entire sequence, is what is this book? Uh, this book might have the first... There, there might be one of four different things. It's, it's the... It's the left side of the middle green bookcase. Economic means that the password is best. Results means that the password is king. Breakdown means that the password is bomb. And new plans means that the password is Mako. Uh, and so, and the, and the password is never Hojo or Orbs. And so I just have a dumb little mnemonic device that's the easiest way to remember it is, uh, uh, you know, economics are best. You just think, e economics are best. That's one of the weaker ones. Um, but the second, you know, but that's what Shinra thinks, right? Who gets results? The king gets results. If it's results, it's the king, because the king gets results, right? Breakdown, bomb, easy. Bombs cause a breakdown, you know? What, what caused the breakdown? Bomb went off. You bomb the reactor, it broke down. Uh, and then... New plans is Mako. Um, because I don't know. Mako's the new plans. So that's it. So you only have to look at this particular book right here. And economic means that the password is best. So you can come on down here and talk to the mayor and just mash until he says, got it? Right? It's a tiny little text box where he says, got it? Right there. At that point, stop mashing. You get here. And we know because of, uh, we know because of economics that's or economic that the password is best and there you go we got it and then you mash until he gives you the key card then he gives you elemental after elemental four text boxes so i'm usually buffering away from him at this point one two three four and then you're running away are they always in the same order oh yes yes they are always in the same order so best is the top option king is one down Bomb is three down and Mako is four down. That's a really good point because if you're going turbo speed here, if we're going fucking turbo speed, then uh, then like that's something that you should be thinking about is instead of even thinking about the word, just think about how many down inputs it is, you know? So this one's economic. That's a bad example, that means. Okay, results. 
So, so instead of, uh, so if it's economic, you know that you can just mash because you're just going to pick best and you're going to get it. But if it's results, you know that it's king. And, and for turbo speed, right, you should just translate that to one down input in your head, you know, so that when he says, got it, you just go one down. You don't even have to think about it. Uh, so yeah, so the reason you need to get the password correct besides it being fast is uh is is to get the elemental uh to get the elemental materia which is going to be quite important uh for later in the run it's not mandatory but it basically is you should get it all right uh there is another way to do this though as kit kat pointed out in chat already um the way that it's decided what your uh, password is is based on your in-game time as you enter the room um, and so it's a it's a C I've actually never done it this way before I personally don't do it this way because I don't think that it takes you know it only takes like five seconds on PS2 loading times it only takes like five seconds to run up here check this book and run down right there you go so uh, so I don't think that that's a big deal, but this is a comprehensive tutorial. Hey, it's your old pal Shitty Mike Dash. So uh, I had to record this part later because I never actually do this strat. So uh, here we go. Let's let's go over it real quick. Um, so you can actually predict your mayor password by using your in-game time. So if you run up here and you and you menu right here, you can take a look at your in-game time, and if you mod it by four. Uh, which a minute mod four is zero, so you only have to look at your seconds digit, that means. Um, and you just go right when the seconds take over, like right there, I went at 30. 30 mod four is two, and so that means, wait a second, yeah, it's two. Uh, and so you can basically take the answers zero, one, two, three, and you can uh, relate those to the answers Mako, King, best bomb now this is on duck station though so our load time was a little bit faster uh and so we have to go one earlier so two out of one through three you know or or the third option you could say uh would be best but because we're on duck station it loaded a little bit faster and we're going to get king and it's because of complications like this that i don't do this strat you know uh but if I'm right, it should be king, and there you go. So once again, it's uh, MKBB, or like, Materia Keeper? Better beat him, you know? Uh, and so just think about that, right? So once again, this strat is to come up here, uh, menu about here, right when the second ticks over, go. 37 mod 4 is 1, uh, which is the second option. Um, and so that would be king. Right? Materia Keeper? Keeper? King? Uh, but because we're on Duck Station and it loaded a little bit faster, it's going to be Mako because that's the previous option. So, um, I, I, w w what my suggestion would be, uh, if you're interested in this tiny little time save, is get to... I, I, I would say get to this part in the game where you just got the key card from this guy. Don't go up there because that'll randomize your password. Get the uh, key card from this guy, and then take the elevator down to the first floor. Uh, and down here, from here you can just run outside now and save the game, right? Boom, you can save the game, and then you can just load the file, come over here, uh, and then don't go straight to the last floor, because then you're, you know, you're... Um, you're not controlling when you enter the room. So go back to 61, and there you go. So you can load the game, go to 61, and then try this over and over again. 29, that's like uh, one, right? So once again, that's uh, on Duck Station, that's gonna be Mako, but I don't know if it's, a, if it's really a rule. <laughs> No, it didn't work this time. But again, this is emulator, so like the so like the load times are different. Um, so yeah, the, just the uh, the MKBB 
Mako King Best Bomb. Uh, however you want to remember that, that is the order of the 0, 1, 2, 3 password order when you do mod 4 on your on your in-game time. If you're, if you're interested, make that save file, do a few tests of your own, and that's like a 5 second time save. Alright, alright, so anyway, back to things. Uh, 4 text boxes, so this time, go to the elevator. Because we're gonna go all the way up, as high as we can go now, and that would be a lot of staircases to have to run up. So instead, just go to floor 65 right here, which is also seven down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can just kind of count your down inputs to seven. Okay, this screen is live. So uh, those last few screens that we were on were not hostile. This one is, so we need to worry about our movement again. This room, there's a, there's a couple things to talk about with this room. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is if you are on a step route or you're on steps where you are anticipating a triple data snake fight, then I would recommend that you uh, I would recommend that you go to A to B active because the triple data snake fight can really screw you over and A to B active makes it easier to escape fights because when you're holding R and L, if uh, it only increases your runaway, your hidden runaway meter if time is flowing. And ATB wait and recommended uh, freeze time during battle animations. And so battle animations are just a bunch of wasted time where you're not even running away. Uh, so if it's a, it, but, but, you know the whole change trick where you're holding left in circle? Change doesn't freeze time. So if you are running away from a fight on ATB wait, it's particularly good to hold left in circle to do those changes to give yourself free runaway time um but if you're on a to be active it's still good on a to be active but a to be active is generally better especially if you're going to run into a really nasty fight and in on this step route uh we are going to run into a triple data snake fight so we want to be on a to be active for this room so at some point in this room before the fight turn on a to be active and here's the deal so for this room we have to open the chests in a certain order or so the germans would have us believe But we actually just have to open this uh, chest first, and we have to put it into the bottom right slot, and that actually opens up like all of the chests, and it lets us do it in any order that we want. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, but that's the case. And here's the deal. Remember when I was talking about brushing? Like, if you were to zigzag Cloud up into this door, without hitting any uh without hitting any walls that would be more movement than if we just ran to about right here and then if you're running straight up it causes cloud to run at this angle that's not possible with an eight directional d-pad but it's straight for the door so little things like that are all over this game's movement and you have to always be thinking about so you'll notice that for to get into this door right here, the optimal movement uh, is to run upright a little bit and then up and then and then slide along this wall until you're at the point where up left is now the B line. You know what I mean? So don't you know don't don't avoid the wall and do that. You know, uh, it's it's better to grind against the wall like that. And then chests, you should always uh, you should always pick uh try make an attempt to open chests from as far away as possible so that you don't waste time running to and back from it but yep so that's the first chest that you open up and then specifically if you put it into this closest spot down here which you can get to by uh which you can get to by buffering upright and mashing circle uh place this one this now makes it so that you don't have to open the chests in order anymore, and you can do it in any order. Uh, and so, I like to go to this one next. Just make it real simple. Now you may be wondering, what if you don't do that, then what is the order? This is just going off memory, right? This is just going off memory. But I believe the order is this one, then this one, then this one, then the other one in this room, and then the one way back there. I think that's the official order. 
But uh, yeah, because of the uh, little exploit here, for whatever reason that it exists, we don't have to worry about that. Okay. So just, you, you have to do it one at a time, though. You can't carry more than one Midgar parts at once. And now on this particular step route, we are about to get into a fight. If you get through the door, your steps are Oonga Boonga. But uh, you're kind of expecting the fight somewhere in here. It doesn't matter for steps, because no matter what order that you do them in, um, it's just a run from the door to a chest to the door, and then to a chest to the door. Each one is a set amount of movement, and it doesn't really matter what order you do them in, because it's all going to add up to the same amount either way. And since you have to start with this one, that means that you can't just like shortcut into this one and then go in or something like that, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, the order does not matter for steps, because you have to start at the first one, and then from then on, they're all going to add up to the same amount of steps, because each one of them is its own self-contained uh, movement. Alright. So, on this particular step route also, what I like, and uh, what I like about getting the battle right there, is that it reminds me, for the first three parts, when you go into this room, you buffer upright to go around the right side, and then after you get into the battle, when there's two left, you go up left to go around this way. So the battle makes a, so the battle makes a really nice uh, time to remember when to switch which direction you're going. And then also, yes, that is another really good point. This room is not live, but the outside room is. So remember that whole thing I was talking about, about how you can lose steps or gain steps for no reason based on switching between hostile and non-hostile environments? This room's got a lot of opportunities for that to happen all right in a row. Alright, so then the last one is up here. And then straight left. And down and around. And now, since we got into that triple data snake fight at any time that you so choose on this floor, uh, you can go back to A to B wait because we're going to want it on wait for the next, uh, for the next boss fight. All right. And that's this room. Nothing more to it. Now that all that has done, we can open this, which gives us the 66 key card, which allows us to, uh, go up here. And so for this room, if you buffer straight right, you go out the door and all we need to do is come straight around the bottom, go into this toilet, take the second option to climb up, and then just buffer down uh, to get to a cutscene. You can flush the bad RNG down the toilet if you want, though. That's, that's optional. Alright, so once we've seen that cutscene, we are now able to go up the next floor because Hojo's gonna be around. So here's kind of a tricky part. This is, this is just, it's not super tricky, but it's a little tricky. Pay it, you gotta pay attention here. So, um, what we're gonna do is uh, buffer upright and run out of the bathroom, right? Upright and run. And now on the next screen, we want to get out as quickly as possible. And it's easy to bonk here and lose time. Uh, so what I do is I think I buffer upright and then switch to up down or switch to down right just really soon to just uh, to just squirm out of that out of that door as quickly as possible. I didn't even do it very fast there. Um, so yeah, it's upright into, into downright, uh, just very quickly to get out of this door. And why is it so important? Because then you come up here as quickly as possible, you know, using, uh, as good of movement as you can, um, to get to, to hit this cutscene trigger as fast as possible. Because what's going to happen now is we are about to regain control of Cloud, and we're going to be buffering upright and run when we regain control. But you see this lady in green down here? She has a random chance to turn right. And if your movement was slow getting to this cutscene trigger, she can actually get in front of you and you get stuck behind her. But if you're fast enough, you'll get in front of her. So we'll see what happens. Oh, she turned. Whoop! But did you see that? So she turned and we barely slipped in front of her. So... 
it's a small thing, but you got to have good movement coming out of the bathroom and get down here as quickly as possible so that if she turns, uh, you don't get stuck behind her. And then just go up the stairs. So for this part, we just get a little bit of dialogue, and then this is a live screen again. So beware about your steps. We are now in hostile territory once again. Uh, so what, uh, what I like to do here is run straight right out the door, but then go down. And as soon as you see that cloud cut down, uh, this right here is like a circular curved surface, you know? And so it's another one of those surfaces that's good for movement. Because if you just grind down right into just left, or sorry, down left into just left, you know, it, uh, it hugs all of this as closely as possible to then just hug this corner as quickly or as, as tight as possible. Um, then you can go straight left and then about here, you know, you don't want to go up left because you're going to go in here, right? So around here, you know, you can switch to up left and then just up to get around. There's like a spoon right here. You see these like spoons? Yeah, don't get stuck on those. Uh, but, you know, switch to up as soon as you can to kind of cut this corner here. Um, so up left. And, whoa! Oh, that's right. You get into a battle here on this step route. So on this step route, if, uh, if you get into this battle after this divide, uh, after this thing right here, you're looking, you're looking good on steps. Um, you don't want to be too far behind back here. All right, all right. So now uh, you can buffer up and left out of this to get around the boxes and then straight forward. And once Cloud is around the boxes, switch to just up right to, uh, to get through this as quick as possible. Now this chest has poison in it and you want poison. Uh, you can do it, you can grab it kind of whenever you want. A lot of people have menuing routes that want you to grab it later. Uh, I grab it right away. And then go into the elevator and buffer down to initiate the next uh, cutscene here. And we are about to do the sample fight. Uh, and the sample fight is a great example of how to do slightly more advanced ATB weight maneuvering, but still not quite weight tricking like we're going to talk about later. So we're still on ATB weight here because uh, we switched back to it. And now at this point, uh, so you just mash through this cutscene. When Red turns back and says, like, I'll help you all out, at this point you want to start paying attention because you're about to have to make a choice. Um, Cloud runs down. He's got a big text box where you clear one thing. And now you choose which character that you don't take into the sample fight because they're running off with airs. The faster choice is to get rid of Barrett because Tifa throws grenades faster than Barrett does. However, if Tifa's been getting like wailed on and she's like in critical health right now or something, you might want to take Barrett for safety instead. It doesn't really matter for the long game. It's just for right now, if Tifa's health is okay, you want her in the sample fight because she throws grenades faster. So we'll do that. Now, we get to name Red 13, once again, uh, shorten the name. Because we skip Cosmo Canyon later, you don't really have to do this because Red doesn't have a ton of dialogue, but I still do it just for like consistency's sake and it's kind of fun. 